हेलो वेलकम बैक वेलकम बैक टू अनदर वीडियो ऑफ ओबिजिस बायोलॉजी इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ मेंडेलियन जेनेटिक्स बिफोर गोइंग इन टू डिटेल्स आई विल डिस्कस अबाउट सम इम्पॉर्टेंट टर्म्स रिलेटेड टू जेनेटिक्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी हैव टू नो वट इज अ कैरेक्टर सो कैरेक्टर इज एनी ऑब्जर्वेबल फीचर और वी कैन से इट अ ट्रेट of an organism whether acquired or inherited for example we can say sheet shape sheet color flower color etc are called as character now the next one is the allele an allele is a variant form of a gene some genes have a variety of different forms which are located at same position or genetic locus on the chromosome an individual inherits two alleles for each gene one from each parent if the two alleles are same then we can call the individual as homozygous for that gene and if the alleles are different then we can call it heterozygous so the next one is the parent varieties differing from one another for one or more characters and used in a hybridization program are known as parents now we have to know what is crossing or hybridization so crossing or hybridization consists of placing active pollen grains from flowers of one of the two parents that is male parent on to the stigma of emasculated flowers of the other parent means the female parent so we have to know what is emasculation emasculation is the removal of all immature anthers of a flower to prevent self pollination now what is the reciprocal cross so when one parent is first used as female in a cross with another parent but in the next step this parent is used as male in another cross with the same parent such pairs of crosses are known as reciprocal crosses so now we have to know what is monohybrid cross so a cross between two parents differing for a single character is termed as monohybrid cross means here the parents are different in only single character means only one character so now what is the dihybrid cross so while these parents differing for two characters are known as dihybrid and the cross between these two parents are known as the dihybrid cross so now what is the f1 and f2 generation the progeny obtained by crossing are known as hybrid or f1 generation and the self pollination in f1 generation produces f2 generation and the self pollinations in f2 yields f3 and so on now let's talk about the earlier concepts of genetics means i am talking about the predecessors of mendel and their works darwin thought that every somatic cell and tissue of body produces a tiny particle called gamule or pan gene which contains both the parental and acquired characters these gamules and pan genes pass into gametes and hence into embryo we can call the pre mendelian theories as the theories of blending inheritance as they believed that characters of parents blended or got mixed 
during their transmission to offspring so why mendel's predecessors were failed the scientists of that time studied the plant as a whole though its total appearance consisting of a large number of characters the scientists did not attempt an exhaustive classification of the different forms of the characters present in the progeny at that time the concept of dominance was not clear the reciprocal crosses exhibit identical results and all the f1 progenies were similar and in f2 progeny diversification is present and some plants in f2 have entirely new character the scientists were more concerned with the description of the various forms appearing in f1 and f2 progeny and in many cases the data from different generations were not kept accurately and separately and in many cases a complete control of pollination in the f1 was lacking actually they have lack of data the numbers of plants studied in f2 was relatively small and the results obtained from a small number of plants are likely to be inconclusive in addition most of the characters studied by the earlier workers were quantitative in nature so due to these reasons mendel's predecessors were failed so now i will discuss why mendel got success so the reason is here first of all mendel selected only pure breeding varieties of p for his experiments and mendel's experimental plant p is ideal for controlled breeding because it can be crossbred manually but itself undergoes self breeding and mendel took one or two characters at one time for his breeding experiments again mendel chose only those traits which showed consistent results the traits mendel selected did not show interaction incomplete dominance and linkage mendel kept record of every cross and subsequent generation produced through self breeding and mendel used statistical methods and laws of probability for analyzing his results and mendel was lucky in selecting seven particular traits of the pea plant and the seven particular characters are here this table shows you the seven different characters of pea plant which were studied by mendel so at first i will tell what is a dominant and what is a recessive character so in f1 generation the character of only of one of the two parents is expressed this character is known as the dominant character and the character of the other parent is not expressed in f1 such a character is referred to as recessive character so for the stem length character of pea plant tall is dominant over dwarf for flower position axial is dominant over terminal for flower color violet is dominant over white for seed coat color gray is dominant over white for pot shape inflated is dominant over constricted for pot color green is dominant over yellow for cotyledon color yellow is dominant over green and finally for seed form round is dominant over wrinkled 
So these seven different characters were studied by Mendel to obtain his results. Why Mendel chose these pea plants? Because pea plants have well defined discrete characters. The flowers are bisexual. The pea dominant self fertilization. Pea plants are easily hybridized and pea plants can be easily cultivated and they have relatively short life cycle. So let's discuss about the Mendel's experiment on monohybrid cross. Here Mendel took one tall pea plant and one dwarf pea plant. And the tall pea plant is represented by the allele capital T capital T and the dwarf pea plant is represented by the allele small t small t. So from the capital T capital T we can get the gamete capital T. And from the small t small t we can get small t as a gamete. So capital T and small t these two gametes produce capital T small t in the F1 generation and it is the heterozygotic tall pea plant. So from this heterozygotic pea plant we are getting a capital T and a small t gamete for each parents. So if we produce the checkerboard of F2 generation then we will get this. One capital T and one capital T will produce capital T capital T. One capital T small t will produce capital T small t. One, again one capital T and small t will produce capital T small t and finally two small t will produce small t small t. So here we are getting one capital T capital T, two capital T small t and one small t small t. So there is actually one homozygotic tall pea plant, two heterozygotic tall pea plant and one homozygotic dwarf pea plant. So the genotypic ratio will be 1 is to 2 is to 1 and as capital T capital T and capital T small t represents tall pea plant and small t small t represent the dwarf pea plant so the phenotypic ratio will be 3 is to 1. So here the probability of getting capital T capital T and small t small t is 1 by 4 and the probability of getting the capital T small t is 1 by 2. Now let's move to the next experiment that is the dihybrid cross. So here Mendel took two parents of yellow and round seeded pea plant and green and wrinkled seeded pea plant. The yellow and round seeded pea plant is represented by the allele capital Y capital Y capital R capital R and the green wrinkled seeded pea plant is represented by the allele small y small y smaller smaller. So we are getting two gametes from capital Y capital Y capital R capital R and the gametes are capital Y and the capital R and the two gametes from the small y small y smaller smaller will be the small y and the small y. And these four gametes capital Y capital R small y smaller will produce capital Y small y capital R smaller in the F1 generation. And from this we will get four gametes then they will be capital Y capital R capital Y smaller small y capital R and small y smaller. So as there will be four gametes for each parent so if we produce the checkerboard of F2 generation then we will get this. So from this checkerboard we will get 1 capital Y capital Y capital R capital R 2 capital Y capital Y capital R small r 2 capital Y small y capital R capital R 4 capital Y small y capital R smaller 
and we will get one capital Y capital Y smaller smaller and two capital Y small Y smaller smaller again we will get one small Y small Y capital R capital R and one and two small Y small Y capital R smaller and then finally we will get one, one small Y small Y smaller smaller so the genotypic ratio will be one is to two is to two is to four is to one is to two is to one is to two is to one the first four that is capital Y capital Y capital R capital R capital Y capital Y capital R small R capital Y small Y capital R capital R and capital Y small Y capital R cap small R represents the yellow round shaded pea plant then capital Y capital Y smaller smaller capital Y small Y smaller smaller represents the yellow wrinkled shaded pea plant and small y small y capital R capital R and small y small y capital R smaller represents the the green round shaded pea plant and finally the small y small y smaller smaller will represent the green wrinkled shaded pea plant so the phenotypic ratio will be 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 now I will discuss about the Mendel's laws Mendel derived his first law or the law of segregation from his experiment of monohybrid cross and according to this law each individual possesses two alleles for a particular character at the time of formation of gametes alleles separate from each other so that each gamete carries only one allele Mendel derived his second law or the law of independent assortment from his experiment on the dihybrid cross and according to this law in dihybrid cross assortment of one gene occurs independently of the other non-allelic gene at the time of gametogenesis because of such an independent assortment of non-allelic genes new combinations of characters are produced in, in the offspring so so far i have discussed about some important terms related to genetics i have discussed about why mendel's predecessors were failed i have discussed why mendel got success i have discussed about the different characters of pea plant I have discussed about Mendel's experiment on monohybrid cross and dihybrid cross and I have also discussed about the Mendel's laws. So thank you for watching the video. Please like the video and share the video and please subscribe my channel. Hope these videos are helping you. We'll meet you in the next video. Thank you.